Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Tabanusi Builders of Ur. It's not an easy game which automatically makes it harder to explain, but let's give it a try anyway. You are going to keep playing until someone removes the last gold token from this track up here. Then you finish going around the table and then every player gets one last turn. Then the game is over. Whoever has the most points wins the game. You can get points during your turn, during scoring moments in the game, and a last bonus scoring when the game is over. But again, you keep playing until the end of the game is triggered by taking the last gold token here. If after the scoring you have the most points, you are the winner. So, when do you remove one of these gold tokens here? As you can see, there are some spaces on the board that have dice on them. The boats. As soon as a player takes the last die from a boat, that player first takes their full turn, and when that's over, you remove one gold token from the track, and you get a specific scoring moment for the area where the empty boat is. I'll get to that later, but that is how you remove a gold token from the time track. When the game is completely over, you do a bonus scoring where each area gets its own special scoring moment again. This is where you get your last points. Plus, each player has one secret goal card, an objective. If you manage to get what the card is asking for, you get those points as well at the end of the game. Alright, how do you play the game? Tabanusi isn't played in rounds, so you just keep going from player to player until the game is over. Whoever started first will have this first player token, so you know who goes last to make sure every player has had the same number of turns. Now, what do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you do three things. One, you take one of the dice from the area where your own two player figures are, and then move the big one to another area. Two, you do up to two actions in the area where your small player figure is. Three, you move your small player figure to where your big player figure is. Let me go through that in a bit more detail. Step 1. You start your turn by taking one of the dice in the area where you are at that moment. I'm playing as orange. My two orange player figures, the big one and the small one, are in this area. So I take one of the dice from here. I can choose which one. It's even important because the number of the die that I take will be the area where I have to move my big player figure to. I'll take this die that shows the number 5. I keep the die with me because this is a resource now. The number isn't important anymore. But I move my big player figure to area number 5. This whole thing is basically planning ahead for what you will be doing on your next turn. Step 2. My smaller player figure is still left behind in this area. And this is where I'll be taking my actions now. If I want, I can pass, or I can do just one action, but I'm allowed to do two actions. And the actions are written on the game board right by the area. Each area has the actions that you can do there. I'll explain each area in a moment. I can do the same action twice, or I can do two different actions. That's up to me. And that's not all. Apart from the two board actions I can do, I'm also allowed to do some free actions. 
those are written up here. So again, when it's your turn, do up to two actions from the board and some free actions. Step 3. When you've done all you can, you finish your turn by taking your small player figure and put it next to the big one. That ends your turn. Don't forget that if you took the last die from the boat, you also do that scoring moment. Before I move on, three important details. When you take a die with the number 6 on it, you can choose which area you want to go to with your big player figure. Another thing, if you pick up a die that shows the same number as the area where you already are, you just stay there. That is allowed. And the last detail, you must take a die. So, if all the dice that you see have a number on them that you're not interested in, you can pay one gold token to ignore the number and just go wherever you want to with your big player figure. Stay with me because I'll now explain the actions in each area. That'll be a lot of information. First, each area will have one or two tiles that were placed there during the setup. So those are actions that will always be in the game, but they won't always be in the same area. Those will be one of the actions that you can do when you're in that area. And I don't really need to explain them because they're easy to understand. But some actions are printed on the board, so they will always be the same. Let me start up here in area number 5. When it's your turn, and your smaller player figure is here, you can choose to do one of the setup actions from these tiles, or you can choose to pay two green resources to place one of your houses on one of these empty spaces. A green resource is either one green die, when you spend this, you put it next to the game board. A green resource can also be this crate token with a green cube on it. If you have it on your own player board, just flip it over to show you've used it. Plus, you can always pay a gold token to count as one of the other resources. So, your resources to spend are dice, crates and gold. As soon as you've paid two green tokens, you choose one of the areas to build your house in. I'll go for the yellow area. So I take the leftmost house from my yellow row on my own player board here. That house can go on any empty space in the green area. Uh, I'll put it on top of the space that shows gold, then I can take a gold token from the supply. And the space on my own player board where I just took the house from also shows gold. That means I can take another gold from the supply. I end my action by taking one of my little orange markers that goes on the leftmost space of the scoring tile in the yellow area where I built my house. There's already one there from another player, so I just place mine on top. Nothing happens. This will get activated when the boat in this area is, happen uh, is empty and the scoring moment starts. And that's already it for this area. Let's go down to area number 4 in the bottom right here. When it's your turn and your small player figure is here, you can choose to do the random setup action, or you can choose to do one of the two actions that are printed here, or both. Don't forget that you can do up to two main actions when it's your turn. One of the actions is pay 
two blue resources and then build one of your houses on one of these spaces on the side. If you build your house on the crate token, you can take the token and place it on your own player board. If you build your house on the other spaces, then you just get the one-time bonus that it shows on that space. Two rules for that. You can never have two houses right next to each other. You either take the left space or the right space, not both. And the other rule is that you have to take a house from your bottom row on your player board. The spaces in this area aren't brown, yellow or white, so you can't take a house from the brown or yellow or white row. The other action you can do here is pay two gold to place one of your markers on one of the boats. And starting from your next turn, you will always have the special power of the boat you put your marker on. These boats show permanent abilities. That was it for area number four. Either build a house around it or place a marker on the boat for a special power. That doesn't just bring us to the next area, it brings us to all the remaining areas. Area number one, number two and number three are exactly the same. The only difference is that you have to pay a different color resource for the build action. For the rest, everything here is the same. Well, except for those random setup actions, of course, but the actions that are printed on the board are the same for all the three areas. So, what can you do here besides the setup actions? When your smaller figure is here, you can choose to do the water and garden actions. This is a nice one because you can do a lot and it all counts as one action. When you do this action, you can spend as many blue resources as you like to buy water tiles from the supply. One tile costs one blue resource. Pay the price, take the tile from here and keep it with you. Same goes for the garden tiles. You spend as many green resources as you like to buy these. One garden tile costs one green resource. Take it from the supply and keep it with you. All of this is included in the same action. And there's even more. You can place as many water tiles on the board as you like. Of course, they have to be placed in the area where you are at that moment. Plus, each water tile must be placed next to either another water tile or next to a garden tile. And the sad thing is that if you cover up a bonus with a water tile, you do not get the bonus. And the last thing you can do in this action, and it's all just still the one same action, is place up to three garden tiles. You can place them anywhere you like, as long as it's on top of a water tile. In case the water tile shows a bonus, you get the bonus. Every time you place a garden tile, you put one of your own markers on it to show it's yours. The best thing to do would be to have a garden right next to one of your buildings. But let me quickly repeat that. The water and garden action is buying water tiles if you want, and maybe buying garden tiles, plus placing water tiles and placing garden tiles. The next action that you can do in area 1, 2 and 3 is place one of these tiles. You see these three stacks at the bottom left here. One is yellow, one is white, one is brown. As an action you can take one tile for free and place it on the board. If the color isn't already there, you can place it anywhere you want in the area where you are doing your actions. If the color is already there, you must place the tile you chose next to the tile of the same color. 
there is a maximum of three tiles allowed per color. If you put the tile on the bonus, you get the bonus. You end your action by placing one of your markers on it. That's it. Place a tile for free and place it in the area. But why would you do that? You need to place these tiles because they are the foundation for the buildings that you can build here. If you want to build one of these, it has to be on top of a tile. And that brings us to the very last action. Build a building. When it's your turn and your small figure is in one of these areas, you can choose to do the build action. But there is a lot to this action. This is how that goes. First, choose a color building you want to build. You can choose between the colors of the tiles that are in this area. For example, there are two yellow tiles in the area where I am. So I choose yellow. One of the tiles has my marker on it. The other one has a marker of uh, another player. And it's next to a garden that the other player built. I've chosen yellow. Next, I pay the price. It costs two resources to build a building. I'm in area number three, and here it shows that I have to pay two white resources. So I discard a white die, it goes next to the board somewhere, and I flip over a white crate. Now it's spent, so I've paid my two resources. But... One of the yellow tiles where I'm going to build on has one of my own markers on it. That means I have to pay one additional cost. I don't have any more white resources, so I pay a gold token instead. Alright, the price is paid. My own marker goes back into the supply next to the game board. I've lost it. But the marker of the other player stays close for now. Anyway, the price has been paid, the yellow tiles go back into the supply, and I put two yellow buildings on the spots where the tiles were. To indicate this is my building, I put one of my houses on it. It's a yellow building, so I take a house from the yellow row on my player board. That goes on the building. And I get the bonus that was just uncovered on my board. The building is built, but we're not done yet. I removed this one marker from another player. That means that player goes up one space on the yellow track. And they get their marker back. Almost there. I build my building next to this garden that has another player's marker on it. That player can choose to go up one space on the track of their choice. One last thing. If I want, I can now spend one gold token to place one of my markers on a boat. Since my building is two spaces big, I can only put it on a boat that shows the number 2 on it. Done! That's how the build action goes. Choose a color, pay the price, remove the tiles and markers, put the building there and your house on top, and maybe compensate other players if their markers were removed and they have a garden next to your building. And optionally, Pay one gold to put your marker on the boat. And those were also all the actions you can do. You still have those free actions that I talked about. The two actions that are depicted up here. You can always do them in addition to the actions from the area. One free action is pay one resource and flip over one of your crate tokens. Doesn't matter which resource, just pay it 
and flip over a crate so that you can use it again. And the other free action is fulfill one of the goal cards on the board. You have these cards here. They have very difficult objectives on them. If you have done what they're asking for, you can take the card and get the reward. You can even take more than one card during your turn. Now, I've explained all the actions to you, but since a lot of the actions didn't give you points, you might be wondering why are you doing all those actions? What are they for? Well, you get those points during the scoring moments. As I've said, as soon as someone takes the last die from a boat, there comes a scoring moment for that particular area. First, that player will take their turn, and when that's done, you get the scoring. Step 1. The player whose turn it is takes the gold token from the time track and keeps it. Step 2. Every player must discard all the dice in the color of that area. The way my board is for this game is this is brown, yellow, white, blue and green. If we're scoring for the green area, then every single player has to discard all of their green dice. Step 3. You do the special scoring for that particular area. Step 4. The player whose turn it is takes all the dice from the color of that area, for example green, and rolls them and puts them back on the boat. So, take the gold from the track, discard all the dice in the color of the area, do the scoring, and put the dice back on the empty boat. Don't forget, when the game is over, you do the scoring moment for each area. Of course, you don't take any gold or discard dice, just the scoring. That's the bonus scoring at the end of the game. Go over each district again. In case you'd like to know what the scoring process is for each area, then I'll tell you now. In area number 5, you score when this boat is empty. You score points for where your rightmost markers are on these boards. These boards are placed here randomly during the setup, and the rulebook tells you what they mean. You don't score for both your markers on the board, just the one that's the most on the right. Do this for each of the three tiles. And for all the players, not just for you. Scoring for area number 4. You do this when this boat is empty. Scoring here is that you get one point for each of your markers that is in the same row or column as one of your houses. I've got a house here and here and a marker here, so that's one, two points. Two points for me during the scoring moment here. And then these three again. All the three areas have the same scoring. What happens here when one of the boats is empty? Every player with a building here scores points. Scoring in area 1 or 2 or 3 is points for buildings. A building isn't just the one where your house is on, but the entire structure. For example, here's my yellow one that is a building of 2. Scoring points for a building goes like this. My yellow building is 2 spaces, so that's 2 points. Plus, this one building right next to uh, this one building is right next to one garden. It's not mine, but that doesn't matter. So that's one extra point. My building is three points. Then I look at the yellow track. My marker is on this space here. It shows a three. That means the points for my yellow buildings are multiplied by 3. 
The building is 3 points, I'm on space 3 of the yellow track, 3 times 3 is 9, I get 9 points for my building in this area when the boat is empty. I go forward 9 spaces on the scoring track. If I had more buildings I would get more points, if there were more gardens next to my building I would have gotten more points, if other players had buildings here they would also get their points. Scoring for an area is always for every player. And this is where I end my explanation. There is a detail about getting a bonus on these tracks, but I'll let you look that up in the rulebook. It's quite easy, but I think there's already been quite an overload of information. Thank you for sticking with me all the way through. This is how you play Tabanusi Builders of Ur. I hope that it gave a good sense of how the game is played and that you'll enjoy it when you give it a try. Thank you for watching, feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one.